I've got a problem. The bore on the engine block in the cylinder is fine here, but it's ten thousandths less in diameter here. In other words, it's kind of tapered. The piston will go in about half an inch, or the piston stock will go in about half an inch and then stop. So I've got to rebore this from the bottom up, or at least uh, make the, the, the bottom up to this uh, towards the top, ten thousandths inch wider as measured down here. So I could set it in the in the vise, but that doesn't um, give me any support up here when I'm uh, boring. I'm afraid that uh, this would flex, you know, uh, it might flex in this like this or it might flex like this. So what I'm going to do is clamp it here. Like this. Put some uh, clamps, put a C-clamp right here. And then board. Hope for the best. If not, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to rebuild this piece. So let's keep our fingers crossed. After a little futzing around, this is the clamping that I wound up with. And I indicated. Uh, this surface and from top to bottom it's less than a thousandth and I indicated this surface which is oh, probably iffy but from uh, top to bottom it, it's out to maybe half a thousandth so this bore might move a little bit but we're going to give this a shot If I have to remake the engine block, I will have learned something. What I, what I will have learned, I'll show you what I will have learned. Use insert based boring bars. Got uh, three of these babies. I don't know why I didn't use them in the first place. Could have started off with the smaller ones and gone to the larger ones. Might have something to do with the available boring heads that uh, are any good. But the boring head that accepts this bar is a good one. It's a Criterion clone, but we've had good luck with it. Wow, did I look out, luck out. Look at this. I'm, I've got the table at rock bottom, and I've got three sixteenths inch clearance. Wow, good for me. Of course, before we bore anything, we have to get the workpiece precisely under the spindle. You know, I saw in a video, maybe it was Tubal Cane, where he lubed a little bit before he bore. So I'm going to try that. It's a little 
that. I mean, loop a little bit before he dial that in. Now it doesn't have to be on zero because we don't really care. What we want is that needle to quit moving. So the x-axis first, and the x-axis, go to the y-axis now. I'm going to have to spend some time getting this just right on the money. quiver there. Let's see if we can do something with the Y to make it quiver. Go back to the X. Quiver is going to be as good as it gets. So let's, let's go for the quiver. Ah. Well, I'm going to quit wasting bites and bring you back when I get it where I want. Alright, that's a pretty small quiver. Each increment is five ten thousandths. So I'm guessing that um, it's maybe two ten thousandths or so. Maybe it's probably less than that. We're gonna call it good. got the bar adjusted so that when I lower it I create a vertical line on the inside of the cylinder about oh, from about here down so I'm within half thousands or less of the bottom diameter so that's where I'm going to start well uh, See what happens. finish is a whole bunch better than the finish I obtained with those cemented carbide board bars like, like this one. I might toss all those bars by a bunch of these borides. More later. This might, uh, this will be my final plunge, and I might wind up returning the piston. But I, I think that the cylinder bore will now be straight.
it's looking good. I'll have to recut that piston, but this bore is immensely better. I'm going to build the piston. It only has to be about uh, 0.8 inches long, a little over. Uh, I'm, the reason I'm making it, uh, I, I'm going to undercut there at an inch and a half, is because I want to fit, I want to hand fit the, uh, um, the piston while it's st still in the uh, chuck all the way uh, through the cylinder. So I'm going to make the, uh, the stock far longer than it needs to be. So we're going to undercut it here uh, about 80 thousandths. This is 12L14, not the ideal choice for steam. But this is going to run on air. It's 12L14 really machines nicely. thousands going to eighty thousands. There's eighty thousands. The uh, piston uh, needs to be re around uh, 0.812 inches in diameter. I say around because I'm going to hand fit it. If it was 0.8115, that would make me real happy. But we'll hand fit it. I'm going to face the end of this piston stock off.
take this piece of 12L14 stock down from 0.875 to about 0.812. Last time I measured the bore with telescope engaged, I measured it at 0.811. So we'll get down to about 0.815 and then start to being very careful how much we take, how much I take. Show you the first couple few cuts, maybe the first cut. Well, maybe more than that. Just gonna take a skim here. It's quite a bit more than a skin cut. We, or rather I, am at 0 0.85, no, 0 0.867. So, we'll, uh, I'll take her down some more and I'll come back when I'm trying to just scooch it off. I just mic'd it. I'm at 0 0.8161 on the way down to 0 0.811. I'm going to take a little hair. I'm going to take a hair over three thousandths and mic again and see where I'm at. I'd like to get a hand fit to this uh, cylinder bore at no more than five ten thousandths under. We'll see what happens. Here's three thousand.
8, 12, 8, 1, 2, 8, 1, 8, 1, 2, and a little bit. I won't even, I can't even pick up a tenth. So it's time to start hand fitting. I'm going to chamfer that with a file. Get this guy out of the way. I'm sure I'm too large still. close to a piece of non-ferrous metal material. I card it. take the smallest amount of that I can. I'll try to take five ten thousandths. That'll be boring. I'll come back with the results. Previously I was at 0.812 plus something. Um, it won't, the, uh, the cylinder still won't fit over the piston. So I'm going to take a thousandths and See if it'll fit. Still doesn't want to fit. You know, I think I'll hit that with the file again.
Well, I'm going to try another thousandth. I just took another thousandth. I would say that fits pretty good. I can't detect. Maybe no, I can't detect any play in it, and I still have a good sliding fit. Of course, it's got play in it. Uh, it's just that I can't feel it with my hand which makes me happy. All right, we're over to the mill. I need a hole for the wrist pin in this piston to be about right there. Um, it's it's got to be in the center of that bar lengthwise and 0.323 inches from this end. So the first thing to do it to find the center of the bar. So we'll take the wiggler way down so that it's uh, past the uh, center point at least of the bar, past the center line. Perfect. So now we need to come over the width of that bar, which is uh, 0.085, no, half the width of that bar. Point. Now I need to come in. A little, hit it a little harder than I wanted to there. Come into the 3.23 number. Kick down. I know the perspective is off here. It looks like I'm to you, it looks like I'm too close to the to the end, but I'm really exactly 0.323 from the end. I'm going to center drill and then drill with a, a through hole with a 0.120 and then ream that to 1255 for the wrist pin. And the reason I'm drilling and reaming first is so that when I come in there with a slitting saw to make this uh, slit for the uh, piston rod to move back and forth, I will um, remove the uh, burr that resulted from the from the uh, drilling operation. So I'll crank this baby up to 2950, which is as fast as this mill will go. It won't be much talking once I start it. Well, it wasn't that loud, was it? Of course, I didn't get enough.
small drill bit where the chips frequently and use plenty of cutting fluid. and ream it. I've got 125 thousandths over reamer in place. And I've slowed the um, mill down such that uh, we're going to ream at uh, 64 SFM. good to me. This little piece will be the connecting rod. will form the connecting rod. It's 65 thousandths of an inch thick. So I need a slot right across the middle of this. 65 thousandths or thereabouts. A little bit more of an inch thick. And I'm going to do that with a slitting saw. I acquired some new slitting saws just for that purpose. These are from McMaster Car. This is a Thurston 72 uh, thousandths inch thick saw. I've got uh, this one and one with more teeth. I think I'm going to use the other one with more teeth. Here's a better look at these two saws. This one's 56 teeth, and this one's 72. I'm going to use this one. They're both made in USA. I've used uh, Thurston slitting saws in the past with good luck, but they were thin, 28 thousandths instead of 72 thousandths. This slot goes in the end right here. And it's 0.5, uh, six, five inches deep, 0.565 inches deep all the way across. So what we want to do is put this blade right across the diameter of the um, workpiece, which will be perpendicular to the hole we just drilled because I haven't changed the setup. That's exactly where we want it, perpendicular. But how do we how do we find the how do we uh, find the surface there? Well, we could come down like this and just note the the uh, DRO reading and call that good enough. Or we could come down like this with a feeler gauge. I've got a five thousandths inch feeler in there. And note the DRO reading of 640. And then we'll come over like this, come down um, half the diameter of the, of the rod, and the rod is uh, 0.8085. So we need to come down 404 plus half the width of the 72 thousandths inch thick uh, slitting saw, so plus uh, 0.036, you come down 44025. So we come down 40425. And there we 
are. So that's how I'm going to do it. I've got the, the saw positioned correctly. Everything's locked down. Well, the knee's locked down. I need to find the surface of the of the bar and then I will make the cut with the y-axis which I'll have to do by hand and I don't I don't have enough experience with uh, slitting saws to know how deep a, a cut I can really take so I'm going to I'm going to take it easy <laughs> Okay, there's the surface. And I think I'll take, oh, why not 10,000? That's always a good number. To see what, what it does. conventional milling with a slitting saw. Well obviously we can take more than 10 thousand. I kind of knew that. Here's 20, we'll see what that feels like. Feeding by hand, remember. So this is going to be boring. My videos are boring enough, so I'm going to bring you back later. I settled on 50 thousandths inch per cut and I'm fixing to make the 500 uh, thousandths inch cut. I'm giving it plenty of lube here. I'm turning it at 194 SFM which is fast for, for steel but it's a slow that this mill will turn uh, at um, well, there I started talking. I forgot to advance the. So we'll start that note. I settled on fifty thousandths inch per cut, and this cut will bring me to five hundred and fifty thousandths, and my target is five sixty five. So here's what 50 thousandths looks like. I'm turning it at 194 SFM, which is fast for steel, but it's as slow as this mill will turn at two and three quarter inch diameter. I'm giving it plenty of lube. Everything's going just fine. So one more cut of uh, 15 thousandths, and we'll have it.
Oh, there we go. Looks good to me. This makes me happy. I had to turn Hank Williams Sr. off to make this little short segment. Here's the piston. <clears throat> Turned out really well. It's got a nice slot in there. And a reamed 0.1255 inch hole for the wrist pin. So this makes me happy.